Alrighty guys, so this is KSB, as you are probably very familiar, or not so familiar, but I'm sure you've tried to make a jet or a plane or something. So things to just start off with, if you hold down your right mouse button, you're able to move around. You can scroll in and out, that sort of thing. It's, I don't think you can do much more here. Yeah, so anyway, let's get into the vehicle assembly building. And to start off with some basic movements and that sort of thing, so the first thing you want to do is you want to add a part of some sort. All right, let's go with the most normal part. All right, so the normal movement is if you hold down your right mouse button, you can rotate. If you scroll up and down, that sort of thing. If you hold down Shift, you scroll in. So up and down, or in and out, look around. All right, that's about it. All right, so then. You wanting to let's have a look at some rockets All right so you have tanks so pods tanks and engines so there's two kinds of there's two kinds of engines All right so you have a solid rocket like that and then you have a normal rocket let's go like that so you will notice, let's get a fuel tank for that. Let's see, so let's check it out. I know this looks pretty silly, but if you look here, you have liquid fuel and oxidizer. So this is a liquid tank, or what's the word here? Yeah, a liquid fuel engine, right? And then here on the left, you see that there is solid fuel. And this means that if you activate this engine, it just continues to burn. You can't turn it off. Where this engine, where this engine over here, you can turn off. So that, that's, that's just important to note in the beginning, right? Then some other stuff, oh, that's too big. Some other stuff you want to do is there's some actions and some tools up here. So if you hit this button here, you are able to move things in whichever direction you want to move them. You notice here how you can move them in and out, around and out, and all sorts of things like that. So you have more pre you have more precise control over where things are. And then there's a rotate tool, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like, is that you can rotate things in whichever direction you want. You can rotate it in or out, or whatever it is. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you see, you can do some. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Anyway, cool. So these are some tools here. So your rotate tool, move tool, and your place tool. Then the other thing I want to just show you quickly here is that there is an action group tool. If I click on something, I can give it a specific um, button I'm going to hit, and then it's going to give it a specific job. So if I want to push number one on my keyboard, and I want it to activate the engine, at any point while I'm flying, I can hit number one and it will activate all these engines. Um, this is more useful when it comes to like lights or if you have a cargo bay and you want to open it. Um, it's really nice to have a specific key for a specific job. Anyway, so that's about that. I have to exit that and then your crew, if you remove crew or add crew, whatever the case is, and then you can move to the editor where you can make planes but we're not making a plane we're making a rocket anyway so let's get out of that All right then the next thing i want to show you is weight to thrust ratio All right, so let's just grab a rocket basic stuff All right so what i want to show you down here on the right is that you have your delta v which is this top number that's pretty much how much mileage you're going to get out of this rocket or this stage. And then there's your meters per second. And then that's how much mileage you're going to get out of your whole rocket. Then your ISP is pretty much how efficiently does your engine use fuel. So you see this is a ISP of 260. Um, it'll be different on a planet with atmosphere and then a planet or in space in a vacuum 
So if you look at the nuclear engine, ha, ah, there we go, found you. So thrust in at sea level is 13 kilonewtons, and then thrust in vacuum is 60. And then you'll see your ISP, engine ISP is 185 and at sea level and 800 in a vacuum. You understand? So this uses much less fuel to go much further. The nuclear rocket. Great for space, useless on a planet that has an atmosphere. And then the next thing here is thrust to weight ratio. So this is how much thrust to how much weight you have in your rocket. So if you have too much weight and too little thrust, you won't be able to get off the planet. Um, I found that this is really useful to look at because if you have a weight to if you have a weight to thrust ratio of less than 1.5, your rocket's not really going to function. So you're kind of wanting to aim for 1.5 to 2. If it's too high, you obviously have too much thrust to weight, um, and you're probably not going to go very far. And um, if the ratio is like 0 or 1, it means that you're not even going to get off the planet. So that's really important to look at. So it's your meters per second, so it's how much distance you're going to be able to travel and your weight or your um, thrust to weight ratio is really important when you're building. Final thing I want to explain is that people build some really strange rockets. Oh, the next thing I want to show you or explain to you, uh, that is the right size, is that you must have most of your weight at the bottom of your rocket. If you have too much weight. If you have too much, if you have too much weight in the center of your rocket, something like that. I don't know. Your rocket is not going to work. <laughs> right. So I I realized I used some keys there. So if you push X, it multiplies. Well, whatever you're using. So if you see down here, if I push X, it goes three and it goes and it multiplies. If you hold down Shift and X, it goes backwards. See, that's really useful. The other key I use is if you hold Control and click on something, it duplicates whatever you click on, which is really useful for building, especially if you need to grab something that you really use. Right. So let's have a look at this. And so when you are um, close to the earth, you obviously are being affected by gravity and this will pull you over to the side. And so your rocket will spin out. So your weight needs to be at the bottom of your rocket. Super important. All right, so we have 4,643 meters a second and so depending on how far you're wanting to go so if you're wanting to go to the moon or wherever you're wanting to go to you need to have a specific amount of meters per second available or delta v so that you can actually get to where you want to go then these things on the right you'll see here that these are your stages so it goes from the bottom to the top so if i were to hit spacebar which makes the stage happen while i'm flying these things will pop off and then my engine will fire makes no sense so i need to drag my engines down here so that's pretty much basic um, construction there's not really much more to say um, you should really be thinking about aerodynamics and that sort of thing so wherever you can you should chuck little like lids on um, it's really good to have a solid rocket because that adds a lovely punch cool you can stage Yeah, see this one should go down here. Um, and then if you add some aerodynamics, here's my... Okay. 
you can hit T, which turns on your guy's ability to control the ship. And if you hit R, then if you have thrusters on your ship, which we do not have. So you can scroll in and out, you hold down the right mouse button, if you hold down your third mouse button, you can turn your um, well, third, third wheel, or third, third mouse button. And then if you hit X, you see the thrust goes up, and if you X, and, and um, sorry, Z, the zero, it makes max thrust and X is least thrust, so that's some of those common things. And then you, and then you have G's, and then on the left you see all of your stages. So you have max thrust and you want it to kind of aim for three G's and let's go straight up until we get out of some of the atmosphere. I haven't yet bought the, ex um, the extension pack, but I'm really thinking about it. <laughs> Right, so we are hitting 3G, so we can throttle down a little bit. And once you hit about um, 120,000 kilometers or meters, um, you're going to pull over right to 90 degrees. Aim for the mountain on the board. Um, e and Q rotate. Cool, so we can drop throttle. Cool, our first stage is done. I guess that's what happens when you don't check everything is right. But anyway, you get the gist of it. That is how you build a rocket. Hope that was helpful. Sorry it didn't turn out as planned, but you'll learn soon enough that this is how KSP works. So if you hit M, you'll see that my trajectory is not very far. And that I will be plummeting back to Earth in a moment. I think this is a successful mission. No one behind. No man left behind. So I think we're doing pretty well. And then another really important thing here is that it's sea level or land level or mountain top. And if you leave it on sea level, you can see this 400 meters. And if you go on land, I've got 100 meters. That makes a big difference when you're trying to land a rocket. Anyway, and then you can fast forward things um, with your uh, bigger than or smaller than brackets. You see here you can affect how fast the days and nights go. And that's it. Then. Sorry if you just had a stroke or a seizure. My bad. But yeah. Come on, guy. Oh, yeah. Here we go. And we have conquered our first planet. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, yeah, subscribe, comment. If there's anything else you'd like me to show or explain or do this again. Yep. We win. Oh. Anyway. Cool, guys. Check you in the next video.